Instagram by Juice and Java. Monster Jam is today. We'll give you all the details. And a new restaurant is opening up at Destiny Mall. We'll tell you all about it. Plus, the Solar Eclipse is Monday. We have a chance to speak with an SU professor, Walter Freeman. All that and more. Juice and Java starts right now. Good morning and happy Saturday. I'm Alana Epstein. And I'm Zach Richter. We'll get to those top stories in a moment, but we're going to begin with weather. The weather today is looking really good. It looks like we're finally seeing that sunshine, right, Zach? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, luckily, our weather anchor, Jude Bazerman, is here to tell us about if those warm temperatures will stay. Jude, good morning. On a good morning to you guys as well. And that good temperature really is going to stay for a while, but right now, it says it's 44 degrees, but it really does feel a little bit warmer than it is. Again, still a little chilly, got that wind blowing in, but at the same time, if you throw in a coat, you'll be good to walk around. And that sun is peeking through the sky today, so we're finally seeing it after an entire week of rain and temperatures in the high 30s to low 40s. And the looking ahead and out into the general region of central, western, and southern New York, really uniform temperatures all day today. Syracuse. 44, Rochester 45, Elmira down south is 43. So if you're driving around the state, it's going to really be the same exact weather. Going to be some clouds, but again, the sun's going to poke through. So we're going to actually see some sunshine unlike the rest of the week. And then looking ahead to tonight as well, it's going to be 43 degrees. So about the same temperature it is right now. There's a small chance of precipitation later on, but shouldn't really affect any of your plans. It's not likely to happen. And again, there's going to be some light wind, but nothing too bad. Not like we usually see in the winters at Syracuse. So. Again, throw on that coat, you'll be good to walk around. Guys, back to you. Jude, thank you so much. Monster Jam returns to the JMA Wireless Dome today. Watch as 12 skill motorsport athletes compete in races and skill competitions for the Stadium Championship Series Red. Right now, the crowd is getting excited at the Monster Jam Pit Party, where fans can meet their favorite drivers and see their favorite trucks up close. Yeah, and you can see the legendary monster trucks like Grave Digger, Mega Loden, and Wrecking Machine. Monster Jam starts at 3 p.m. today at the Dome, and tickets can be purchased from the SU Box Office or Ticketmaster. And the excitement today let me tell you is very there today on campus everyone is just like so excited with the weather especially that's for what I was gonna event. say the weather is amazing it's definitely a great day to walk over to the dome have you ever been to Monster Jam I haven't but I've heard great things so maybe I'd have to check it out today I got to go my freshman year it was so much fun I definitely recommend it I might actually go later and get some last-minute tickets it's always fun to do that yeah I mean well Monday's Eclipse it will lead to some changes to campus transit schedules sticking here on campus and the huge trolleys and vans will be paused from 3 15 to 3.30 during the eclipse's totality. Now, normal schedules will resume, though, after the eclipse ends. You could spend the extra time enjoying one of the many eclipse events taking place across the SU campus. Newhouse and the College of Arts and Sciences are both hosting eclipse celebrations Monday afternoon, and students living on campus can pick up a free pair of eclipse glasses at their residence halls, and off-campus students can get them at the Goldstein Student Center. Syracuse University's Climate Action Plan has a goal to reach net zero by 2032. The updated plan was released yesterday. People within the Sustainability Project say reaching carbon neutrality in eight years is an ambitious task. To remain on time, sustainability management will track greenhouse gas emissions each year. And the two phases of the plan will focus on energy efficiency and on-site renewable energy. Recent projects include LED lighting in the Lally Athletic Complex and steam station modernization. Now, the Climate Action Plan will be updated in the future based on evolving technologies. An annual contestant that has been contest, excuse me, that has been going on for 71 years brings a group of people together here in Syracuse. What they share in common is their passion for beards and mustaches. Our reporter, Caitlin Campbell, is there right now. Caitlin, what's going on? Hey, Alana and Zach. Yeah, that's right. It's the 71st annual beard and mustache competition here going on in Syracuse. Now, it started over 71 years ago for Prohibition and Lent as a way for people to come together, grow out their beards, and then shave and celebrate when come Easter. Now, I got the chance to speak to people about why it's so important to create this community and to celebrate. Well, first of all, I was absolutely amazed at people that came from all over. We had people from New Hampshire, Rhode Island, they're coming from, I believe we had like Pennsylvania, they just, from all over the Northeast basically. The 
beards and mustaches themselves were pretty impressive. We had people with beards down to here in the different categories. And while winning trophies and victory is often the goal, all participants win a second family. And I think um, having that uh, camaraderie and, and connectiveness of something that they take pride in, which is their beard or their mustache, and they want other people to take pride in what they're doing, they get together and then they start finding out other things about each other and it becomes this big community and you start knowing everybody. That's life. Now it's going on today at from Syrac from two to four p.m. here at the Syracuse Polo Show, which is about ten minutes away from campus. You're able to walk in, see all the beards. There's different categories for different types of beards, and there's even one for women called the Whiskerinas. But that's all I have right now. Zach, Alana, back to you. Okay, Caitlin, thank you. And keep your eyes peeled for a new restaurant next time you go to Destiny USA. Bash Potato has opened its doors this past week on April 1st and specializes in, get this, loaded baked potatoes. Sounds delicious. They start with a one pound russet potato, baking it and whipping it with butter and mozzarella. Mm. Then customers can choose from a variety of toppings from beef to jalapeno peppers and more. You can try it for yourself on the second floor of Destiny USA above Texas to Brazil. I have to say, I'm not the biggest fan of potatoes but with all You're those not? toppings I'm not but with all those toppings and everything they're loading it with I might have to try it yeah it sounds really good with the butter on it and it melted with mozzarella mm -hmm. I don't know no that's I, sounds, I, I think I'd that. give that a try definitely there's a lot of restaurants coming in and out of destiny we're gonna have to definitely head over there and go see all these new definitely. things definitely well, back here on campus, the Newhouse Research Lab Space Code Shift held an open dialogue on current social issues to the SU community yesterday. And here to tell us about the data-driven research behind this open dialogue is reporter Maura Vaughn. Maura, good morning. Zach and Alana, thanks guys. Welcoming data scientists from around the country, Syracuse's Code Shift Symposium yesterday shared the research findings addressing worldwide societal concerns. CodeShift Initiative uses multimedia technologies to present data not just found through statistics, but in a way that engages the community to want to be involved. This data presents and tells a story, ranging from topics such as immigration, migrant care, and gender and race oppression. Creator and founder of CodeShift, Srivi Rama Subramanian, tells me the reason behind CodeShift and why students should care about these global concerns. CodeShift is a multidisciplinary lab space which uh, brings artists and researchers, community members together to uh, use media and technologies for social justice, sustainability, peace and well-being. You know, we only are seeing a small amount of stories in what we consume, but this the world is much bigger. Take the time in college to, you know, get out of campus, to connect with other groups on campus that you might not usually mi mingle with. Trivi tells me there are always stronger outcomes to critical concerns when we educate ourselves on what is occurring outside of our bubble and take action. Global concerns such as immigration, migrant care, and racial stereotypes are all tougher topics but need to be discussed to bring about change. Researcher and speaker of Coach, Sw Coach Switch, Monica Cornejo, tells me that these issues are affecting students that are white or in predominantly white institutions because we are all interacting with all human beings on a daily basis. Now these issues, while maybe not affecting you personally, could be impacting someone in your relationships, someone you are friends with, someone who works at a university, or maybe at your favorite restaurant. These interactions make us who we are. That is all from me, Zach and Alana, back to you. Okay, Maura, thanks so much. And we have a new event to tell you about as Cirque du Soleil is bringing their newest show to Syracuse this weekend. The name of the show is Cortillo, which is the Italian word for a joyous procession. Now, this is the first time Cortillo has been performed in Syracuse. The tour has a team of 120 people that come from 27 different countries. And the show runs for two hours and has over 30 original songs. Cortillo will be performed at the Upstate Medical Arena at the On Center through Sunday. Alana? The Syracuse Amphitheater has announced another concert during the New York State Fair. Country star Walker Hayes marks the third show that overlaps with the 2024 fair dates. 
He is scheduled to perform at the same time as a different country music act. Definitely be careful, this could mean big crowds and heavy traffic in the area. Unfortunately, tickets to amphitheater concerts are no longer accepted for free admission to the state fair. The current summer lineups for both events can be found online on their respective websites. After the break, I had the opportunity to speak with a Syracuse University professor about the eclipse. And we'll tell you about a radio station on campus. Juice and Java is just getting started. We'll be right back. Dad, they took over my bedroom. Come on, come on. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! Okay? I'm trying, dear. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Welcome to my house. Lately, not my happy place. Everybody's pretty tired of each other. The parents were not themselves. My little brothers were morphing into small creatures. The walls were closing in. Clearly a case of too much family, too close, 24 seven. And there's a lot of that going around right now. If this sounds like your house, try going someplace new. Yourlifeyourvoice.org. You'll find lots of ideas to help you handle the family stresses of being confined to close quarters. Yourlifeyourvoice.org. It might not get you out of the house, but it could help you find a little more breathing room. You're watching Juice and Java with Zach Richter. Alana Epstein, and Jude Bazerman. Now, your morning news continues. Back to Juice and Java. Yesterday, I got the chance to speak with astronomy professor Walter Freeman about the science behind the eclipse. Take a look. Welcome back to Juice and Java. In just a few days, Syracuse will be in direct path of the total solar eclipse. Here to tell us all about the details is Syracuse astronomy professor, Walter Freeman. Walter, it's so great to have you here. It's great to be here. So for the past few weeks, all everyone's been talking <laughs> about is the solar eclipse, as you know. Mm -hmm. So what makes this one so special? It's here. These, these happen somewhere on Earth, you know, ab about every year, but most of them happen not here. They happen pl in places in the middle of the ocean, in places we can't get to. This one is right in our backyard. So what is the best place for students or anyone in this area to view the solar eclipse? The best place is really around the people you want to be with. Do you want to be out on the quad with thousands of your fellow <laughs> students? Do you want to be out at uh, Lake Onondaga State Park with, um, with the broader Syracuse community? community? Uh, do you want to be out in the woods next to your tent in the middle of nowhere by a lake that's not even on the maps with your closest family. And, and so my, my answer to the question where the best place is is kind of personal. It's you're going to, to experience, depending on where you are, between a minute and a half here to up to three and a half minutes if you go further north of, of totality. So think what would make your, your heart happiest uh, I love to, that. to be around <laughs> during those minutes. I love that. So clearly there's a lot of places to view it. As an astronomy professor, you obviously know a lot about this. Mm -hmm. So. Is there anything that might happen or change during this eclipse that we should know about? So we're going to get um, about an hour and a half of increasing partial eclipse, right, as, as the moon eats up more and more and more of the sun uh, before the, the minute and a half here in Syracuse of, of totality. So we will see it gradually get darker until it gets suddenly and remarkably darker during, during totality. Um, I've never experienced this myself, actually. I've never been in a total solar eclipse before. 
uh, I've heard one of the more remarkable things that happens is, is all of the wildlife doesn't know what to do. All of the birds say, oh, I'd better go back to my nest, it's nighttime. Um, and I've heard that's remarkable. Another thing that I've, again, heard about but never witnessed myself is if you're near the edge of the band of totality like we are, um, you will see light on the horizon from places that are not completely in the moon shadow. So we may see, since we're on the southern edge of the band of totality, um, we will see a glow, perhaps, on the south. And what are you most excited for with this solar eclipse? I'm excited to see how people react, right? I, I'm excited to see the community brought together by nature doing something beautiful, right? It's, it's not often that we all stop what we're doing, um, don't worry about our homework, all of our classes are canceled, and we all go out and look at this treat that nature has given us. Um, I, I know the last time that we all just stopped and looked up at the same thing um, was 9-11, was and that was, of course, a tragedy. But this time, it's all going to be something beautiful, and everyone's going to be standing on the quad, looking up southwest at the sun and the moon. And what I'm excited about personally is seeing the whole community find beauty in kind of the waters that I swim in every day because, mm. because I teach astronomy. I love that. I think I definitely think this mm -hmm. is going to bring everyone together. Thank you so much. That was great. Of course. Thank you so much, Walter. I appreciate it. Still ahead this morning at 1130, the latest from WWE and your five day forecast a little bit later. We'll be right back. You mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, let's crawl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, let's crawl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm, hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. And welcome back to Juice and Java. Today we're highlighting another form of media students can utilize right here on campus, WERW. And we're joined by its outgoing general manager, Perry Friedman, and incoming general manager, Polly Hoffman. Guys, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Zach. Thanks for having us. Of course. So tell us a little bit more about the radio station, WERW. So WERW is what everyone really wants. Um, it is the only independently run radio station here on campus. We're not wow. syndicated by the FCC. So basically what that means, we give a student, no matter what they do, no matter if they're a graduate student, an hour time slot a week where they can play whatever they want, um, whatever they want to talk about. Um, and that's basically what we do. So where where does it air? Like how, how can you listen to it? Um, so you can listen to it through our website, which is wrwradio.org. We okay. have the link there. And we are working on an app that will wow. stream it straight from there. And so do you, do you guys do programming like 24-7 or is it? Okay, yeah, wow. so basically we start our shows around 9 a.m. and they end at 2 in the morning. Uh, we're local <laughs> in the Queens building, so we have students, about 150 students, in and out of there every week. So what is it like managing that? Because I assume you're not there from 9 a.m. to 2 a.m., <laughs> so what is it like managing that? Yeah, we have a great team of people who um, work around the clock to just you know, come in and have you know, really great conversations, and then we have really great DJs who don't mess anything up. That's so nice. it's really important that we all work together. For students out there looking to get involved, what is your best advice to them? Um, so next semester we will be at the involvement fair. You should sign up to become a DJ there, but if you want to join the lovely staff team, we will have a staff application on our Instagram probably over the summer. 
um, oh, the Instagram is at WRW Media. Okay, and uh, can, can you tell us a little bit more about events you've had this past semester, and do you have any upcoming plan for next semester? Yeah, so we recently had our semesterly launch party where we had the all-student band Froggies as our opener, and Frankie Cosmos as our headliner. We had four local uh, vendors come in to sell clothing and records and eight different student organizations. So it was an awesome community of people, some really great live music, and we're planning to have another one next fall to showcase more up and coming music acts. Do you have a date yet? Not yet. <laughs> okay. Um, and I know you talked about this uh, a, a little bit earlier, but how is WERW different from, you know, the other radio stations on campus like Z or, yeah. you know, Yeah, so I was actually part of Z&I my freshman year, and okay. I was looking for an outlet that didn't play top 40 hits, and I wanted something that I could listen to Lana Del Rey, but I could also go to Trippy Red. Like, I wanted to do all of yeah. these things, um, and I couldn't find it, but I found it on WRW, um, and... WRW is that place. We have a studio in the women's building that you have space to bring your friends in to a place that might not be your dorm. I know we started out in COVID freshman year. And yeah. There was nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. um, WRW offered that space, that community um, that I think that other radio stations just haven't had. We're an indie through and through. We're alternative. We wow. like to do things off the beaten track. So it's fun. So where in the women's building is it? I'm yeah. just curious, because I know that you've got the gyms there, you got a whole bunch of stuff, so. Yeah, we're in the old ticket office. So, you know, if okay. you call the box office, that is our um, <laughs> okay. phone attached in there. But yeah, we shape-shifted it, we have a back office, and then our station runs out of the front where the tickets used to be sold. Okay, okay, got it. And can you talk about, is this the event that you were talking about, this video behind you? Yeah, this is our last event. Okay. Um, this was last semester's launch party. We were really excited. Um, we had Hannah Jadagu and Devin again mixed with Padma, um, who released an EP. Um, we also had like 10 different vendors. That's our studio right now. Wow. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We have our back room. We okay. have a bunch of student-made art. Um, so WRW is just like a place for people to explore their passion. And like we've been around for over 45 years on this campus, so it's pretty insane. Okay, well, Perry <laughs> and Polly, thank you so much for joining us this morning, giving us all your insight on WERW. Thanks, Zach. Thank you for having us. Thanks, everyone. Well, this weekend of the world of entertainment tonight has all of its eyes on Philadelphia as WWE presents WrestleMania 40 live from Lincoln Financial Field. Here to give us the rundown of what matches we can expect this weekend is Citrus TV's Charlie Goldberg. WWE Universe, it's that time of the year as Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania hosts the two-night entertainment extravaganza known as WrestleMania. And with it being the 40th anniversary of the event, we sure have a lot to look forward to. Here's what's on the card. As after winning the Women's Elimination Chamber match back in Australia, the man Becky Lynch has punched her ticket to the showcase of the Immortals. There, she'll challenge WWE's Eradicator, the Women's World Champion, Rhea Ripley. Lynch is actually 1-0 against Ripley as she beat her back in NXT in 2018, but a lot has changed since then, including Rhea's meteoric rise to the top of the WWE. So will Rhea win and continue her dominance over Raw's women's division, or will the man Becky Lynch add one more title to her already stacked resume? We'll find out as Mommy takes on the man at WrestleMania. <laughs> Moving on now, is it a match nobody thought would be possible? That was until last SummerSlam, of course where Jimmy Uso did the unthinkable, turning his back, betraying his own brother Jay for the betterment of the bloodline. Last year, the Usos went into WrestleMania together as champions, but this year, they're going in head-to-head -head as bitter rivals. For the third time in WrestleMania history, it'll be brother versus brother as Jimmy Uso takes on Jay Uso. And now for the main events. Headlining WrestleMania Saturday, it'll be the biggest tag team match in the history of the WWE, where the winner of the last two Royal Rumble matches, the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, teams up with the World Heavyweight Champion Seth Freakin' Rollins to take on the Bloodlines, undisputed WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns, and his cousin, the final boss, The Rock. And with all of the hatred these men share for each other comes major stakes as well. As if Cody Rhodes and Rollins win the match, the Bloodline will be barred from the championship match the following night between Rhodes and Reigns. However, if The Rock and Roman win, the following night's contest will be held under Bloodline rules, meaning all members of the Bloodline can interfere, including The Rock. 
This all concludes 24 hours later, as in the main event of WrestleMania Sunday, Cody Rhodes has one final opportunity to finish his story. He looks to dethrone the man who's been ruling over the WWE for the past 1,300 days, the Tribal Chief, the head of the table, the reigning, defending, undisputed WWE Universal Champion, Roman Reigns. All that and so much more take place on Saturday, April 6th and Sunday, April 7th in Philadelphia. Okay, that's our wrestling expert, Charlie Goldberg. Charlie, thanks so much. Well, still ahead this morning, our Jude Bazerman will give you a five-day forecast and we'll preview Coachella. We'll be right back. Well, when you wake up tomorrow morning, again, going to be the same temperature around what it is right now, partly cloudy, but it's going to warm up in the evening. So look forward to that good weather Sunday afternoon and evening. And then looking into our five day forecast, we got some interesting weather in the mix. I put that palm tree at the end because you know what? Compared to last week, it's going to feel like we're in Florida or somewhere tropical, which I love. No complaints. Sunday, it's going to be partly cloudy temperature in the mid 50s. And then on Monday, we have our solar eclipse. So watch out. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's going to happen around 323 in the afternoon here in Syracuse. There's going to be some clouds, so the, to the solar eclipse might not be able to be seen as great as it could be somewhere else in the country. But really, with that being said, the main concern is getting around. you got to be careful if you're driving or on the roads near the eclipse or when the eclipse is starting. Just be careful. There's going to be a lot of traffic, and there's going to be a lot of visual, visual impairments that might hinder your ability to drive. Looking forward to Tuesday, it's going to be 68, really warm, mostly cloudy, however. And then on, on Wednesday, the rain, of course, is going to come back. And not, not damp for the week, but again, it's not going to be sunny looking all the way forward. But you know what? I do have some really good trivia today. The question of the day is what, Zach and Alana, the wording might not make perfect sense, but the fastest temperature rise in 24 hours, so the coldest it's been, kind of to the hottest it's been. Like where, what state do you think that's happened in? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> this is a hard one. I, it makes sense. Um, We're not on weather for a reason. I'm gonna <laughs> say I'm gonna say Texas B. Texas, that's a good yeah. guess. Zach, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say A, Montana. You know, Zach. You're a hundred percent correct. Wow. Maybe you should be on weather. We'll trade spots for a day. But <laughs> in 1972, in a small town, Loma, Montana, it went from negative 54 all the way up to 49 degrees in a 24-hour period. Wow. That's I mean, that's crazy. We we talk about the weather being very volatile and up and down here in Syracuse, but I mean that. I, I mean, my, my, my body, my immune system wouldn't even I, be able to handle it. Well, that's no why idea. I live in New York. Wait, yeah. Not Montana. <laughs> well, let's go back to the eclipse for a second. Yeah, so you course. said everyone's so excited, but there's this, the potential for some clouds on Monday, you said. Yeah, I mean, it's Syracuse. It's always cloudy. Uh, at the same time, though, it's going to be one of those events where you're going to be able to see it no matter what. It's really just, okay. right, if you're in a part of the country that doesn't see as much cloud coverage, you mm -hmm. might be able to see it more clear. But if you're in a good field like Thorndon Park or, or uh, the Quad, it should be fine. You should have no problem seeing the eclipse. Okay. Well, that's great advice. <laughs> Dude, thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. Well, let's hope the weather does hold up in California as well as the music festival Coachella brings begins Friday in Indio. Approximately 125,000 tickets have been sold. That's a lot. The festival will last two weekends. This year, the headliners are Lana Del Rey, Tyler the Creator, Doja Cat, Pesla Pluma, Lil Uzi Vert, Ice Spice, Jungle, and Sabrina Carpenter are a few of the other acts performing. Now, I know I'm very excited about this. I always watch the live stream on YouTube. 
to you guys at all? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a big, <laughs> I'm a big country music fan. So if Morgan Wallen's not there, there might be some country so artists. Oh, really? There's a ton of artists. Yeah, there <laughs> might be. You might have to take a look. I was gonna say the headliners didn't stick out to me, but I know that's exactly what you like, Alana. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that's all the time we have for you today on Juice and Java. Check us out online at CitrusTV.com and follow Citrus TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm Zach Richter. And I'm Alana Epstein. Have a beautiful spring day, Syracuse.